When the pandemic initially happened, we saw shortages of meat in the beef counter, in the meat counter. We saw prices go really high. The monopoly, however, thrived because their profits went through the roof. The monopolies have forced a lot of cattle ranchers out of the market. And they've done this uh, in many ways, but they import beef from foreign countries and label it as U.S. beef. It's not a secret in the cattle industry, but it is a secret to a large part of America. It's hurting America. It, it really is, because if we run all of our cattle ranchers out of business, then we're going to see huge rises in our food prices, and we're going to be dependent upon these multinational corporations for our food and foreign countries for our food. Brooke Miller, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure, thank you for having me on. Yes. So let's begin the conversation by discussing your work as the president of the U.S. Cattlemen's Association. So can you sort of lay that out? What is the association? Uh, who do you represent? And how, how the, did it come to be that you're the president? Well, we're a nationwide organization. We uh, represent grassroots producers, cattle producers, backgrounders, feedlot op operators. And our, our um, mission statement is to try to ensure the profitability of cattle ranching and farming uh, across this nation. So, so you represent small to mid-sized ra ranches, essentially? We, we, we represent all ranchers, uh -huh. all ranchers, whether they're small or large. Uh -huh. um, we have a, a problem in this country where uh, cattle ranching has not been profitable, uh -huh. uh, and we look at it as a, uh, not only a, an economic problem for rural America, uh, but also a national security uh, food issue too. Wow, so if cattle r uh, raising and cattle ranching is not profitable, why is it, why is it that it still happens? Is, is it being subsidized by the government? When I say not profitable, I mean it's not highly profitable. Oh, I see, I see. Um, and it's hard to withstand any major disasters, any environmental disasters. And cattle ranchers are going out of business and going broke all the time and uh, we've been losing thousands and thousands of cattle ranchers over the last several decades. And it's all based on the fact that we have four multinational corporations that dominate uh, the, pro the food protein industry. They uh, have anti-competitive practices and uh, they basically steal a lot of money out of rural America. When, when uh, live cattle prices are high, rural America reinvests and uh, it, it, it's very profitable. Um, but for so many years, um, it's been unprofitable. We'll have a couple years that are profitable, um, and people always, you know, the cattle ranchers are, are some of the best uh, businessmen in the world as far as being able to manage. They may not be the best businessmen by being in that in that uh, avocation, but uh, they're some of the smartest uh, people that I know, and uh, they can somehow squeeze out a squeeze out a living when uh, a lot of people couldn't. So when you say four companies control this industry. Can you break that down a little bit further? Let's say, let's say I want to start my own ranch. So I buy, I buy up land, I, I buy a couple of animals, I, I you know, b begin the process of raising them, feeding them, et cetera. At what point do I have to interact with one of these four companies? Well, you may never have to interact with one of these four companies, but you'll feel the effects of these four companies. Most cattle producers across this, this, this country have a cow herd and they raise calves as their commodity. And they sell those calves they can sell those calves anywhere from seven to eight months, or they can own them all the way through the feedlot. Uh, when they go from the cattle rancher's ranch, they're sold to different buyers uh, who then grow those cattle and try to put on economic gains uh, with low cost uh, foods. And then eventually they'll go into a feedlot where they'll be fattened um, and slaughtered. And those are the cattle where the market breaks down is at the feedlot, uh, between the feedlot and the packer. The packer then purchases those cattle from feedlots, slaughters them, and then sells them to uh, wholesalers and, and, and retailers. And they have such a monopoly, there is really no free market in the live fat cattle marketplace. So when you say the four companies have a monopoly, is it a monopoly on, on the slaughtering, the feedlots, on um, which part of the when they're equation? when they're purchasing cattle from from people that fatten the cattle on the feedlots, they have a monopoly and they basically there's no there's no price discovery true price discovery they basically set the price and tell them this is what you're going to get. So if I was running my own ranch, I wouldn't be able to slaughter my own animal, pack it, 
and then sell it, let's say, to a local grocer or like a like a regional grocer, it has to go through one of these companies. No, no, you you could if if you had if you were a, a lot of people are are doing something similar to that right now, but uh, beef is a commodity. You could you can't feed America doing that. Okay, there are not enough small independent feedlots scattered across America. We need a regionalization of a bunch of feedlots all over the country in order to do that. Um, so you, if you wanted to do that, a lot of people do do that, but then you run into problems and headaches like finding a packer that actually has space to kill your cattle. Because right now we, we, we're a, a seed stock producer. We raise pure red Angus cattle. And some of our cattle that are not high enough quality to be breeding cattle, we will fatten in our own little small situation and, and, and send them to a local packing plant, a very small, privately owned local packing plant. The problem is, is everybody's got this idea and this is what they're going to do. And I have to schedule, even though I don't know what I'm going to have a year from now, I have to schedule space at that packing plant over a year out now because of, of, because of this crisis. So prior to the interview, we were chatting a little bit, and you said out of these four companies, only one of them is an American company, right? So that, can you sort of break that down for the audience? Can you break down what these four companies are, who owns them ultimately, and how, how did it come to be that these four companies, 75% of which are not American companies, came to preside over the entire industry here in the U.S.? Well, there are four companies that, that control the protein in the world. Uh, you have the, the American company Cargill. Um, you have Tyson Foods, which is a multinational, owned, uh, I think, invested, highly invested by the Chinese. And then you have two Brazilian companies, Manfred and JBS. And JBS is the largest uh, meatpacking company in the world. And uh, they are run actually by um, the Batista family. And the two uh, heads of that company spent time in jail in, uh, in Brazil because of uh, bribery charges. And they basically have, through mergers and acquisitions, have become the largest and, and our government has allowed those mergers and acquisitions to occur because they think bigger, they thought bigger was better and more efficient. And I think the COVID-19 crisis and the, 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 the uh, food chain or the supply chain issues we had with that show that it's, it's not the most efficient way to do it. We need a more regional, uh, diverse uh, food uh, system. Well, let me ask you this, a lot of the people across America, I'm, I'm sure many people who watch this program, go to their supermarket store shelves week after week, and they notice that the price of meat is just going up and up and up and up uh, every week, pretty much. Is that due to inflation? Inflationary forces like the price of fuel, um, the, the just money losing its value, and the, the price of every step of that process going up, or is it, or and or is it the fact that this monopoly has price control, and therefore they see this inflationary environment, and they say, hey. We can pad our profit margins by increasing the price because, well, consumers have to accept a higher price right now because it's an inflationary market. What, what, what do you see happening? I would say both, but largely the uh, largely the monopoly. You know, um, I mean, our fuel prices have doubled, our input prices have doubled, but that doesn't mean we're going to get more for our meat. Now, right now, there's such a shortage. Uh, there's the the quote cow herd that produces the cattle is lower than it's been in 30, 40 years. But that's because the monopolies have forced a lot of cattle ranchers out of the market. And they've done this uh, in many ways, but they import, they import um, beef from foreign countries and label it as U.S. beef. Can you how, believe how that? How are they able to do that? Because our government allows them. 